You're gonna learn a bunch of things in Adobe Illustrator that I wish I knew way back at the start of my career, and would actually few designers even know about. That starts with a setting that's unknown to the vast majority of Illustrator users, and it's been hiding in plain sight for ages. Let's say I'm working away on this design right here. First, let's hide the anchor point so we can actually see what we're designing. And that's with Command or Control H. And that's not actually the setting we're gonna talk about. The thing that people aren't aware of is up here, under View and then navigate down to Trim. With this option selected, we now only see the artwork on the artboard itself. And this allows for us to clearly visualize our design without the clutter bleeding over those edges. We can actually still work on our design and turn off this setting at any point. Pretty cool, huh? Expand and then expand appearance. What's the difference all about? Actually, there is quite an important difference with these two things. I have a shape here and if we come up to object, expand is an option, but expand appearance is grayed out. Now, why is that exactly? The expand option will divide my shape into separate elements as a vector. So my gradient circle would now be split into several objects, but expand appearance is different. And the clue is in the name, appearance. So on my circle, let's open up the appearance panel and add a quick and a simple drop shadow to the circle. Now, if we navigate back to the menu, expand appearance is available. This is because expand appearance works on raster effects such as shadows and blurs, and it will separate the design, but as a raster and not a vector. And that's essentially the difference between these two things, just a vector and raster. Now scaling my shape means the effects scale proportionally as well, which is pretty cool. Next, if you want to actually duplicate a design asset, you'd either use the blend tool or you copy, duplicate, repeat. However, this is the old way to do things. Illustrator has something really cool found under object and then repeat. There are three options here, but let's quickly take a look at grid first. So we have this cool box of our duplication, but let's pop open the settings menu. Now here we can adjust the spacing between our objects. And then here we can also change the arrangement, which is pretty cool. We can end up with a neat looking design just like this in a matter of just seconds. But what about that radial option? This is something I wanted to see in Illustrator for ages and ages and ages. Our circle is now positioned in a radius and we can go into the settings menu as before and make further adjustments. And take a look at this here. Spirograph anybody? All we have to do is flip the fill over to a stroke and bingo. That's looking pretty fresh. A lot of the time in Adobe Illustrator, it's about being 100% precise. And that's where the next tip comes in handy. I have a design here that is symmetrical. And a lot of the time we want anchor points to be exactly in the same position in Illustrator. Which, if I zoom in here and slap on the outline mode of Command or Control Y, we can see they're slightly off. But not to worry because I just press A for the direct selection tool, highlight the anchor points in question, and then head up to Object, Path, and Average. Here you can then select both and then click OK. And now the anchor points will be exactly in the same position down to the smallest scale. And by the way, this isn't actually a flower. No, 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 it's uh, two butterflies put together. What you can see on screen right now is me planning out a new business that I'm really, really hyped on. But the thing is, the process of actually planning out this business has been made easy thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Scrintle. Now, if you've watched my videos and you know me, then you'd realize how much emphasis I put on goal setting and planning. It's how I got to 1 million subscribers on this channel and how I became the designer I wanted to be. This current project I'm working on right here is no different. When Scrintle approached me, I looked at their product and it seemed pretty decent. Then when I actually gained access to it, initially I was a bit overwhelmed because it kind of looks complicated, right? You've got all these linking lines and learning a new piece of software can be daunting. But actually it turned out to be so intuitive and I only did five to 10 minutes of research by watching one of the Scrintle YouTube tutorials. And thereafter it was a breeze and just really intuitive. I really love how you can link cards and boards with just one command. And I have here the main starting point on my plan. And I can just click to any part of my plan from this one spot. I have a checklist up here, which I cross off as I go. And if you want to be hyper organized, you can color code things on the screen tool as well. 
But one thing that I find a tad annoying is how when you make a new card or a new board, it instantly opens up in this preview mode here. That's just me being a little bit picky. I'm going to use Scrintle to finish up planning out my business project here. And you're for sure going to hear all about this later this year. But you can actually grab a 10% discount on Scrintle, which is good for four years. And you can do that by using the code Satori10 in uppercase letters. Or you can just click the link in the description box below of this video. I only ever talk about brands on this channel that I believe in and use myself. And Scrinted is no exception to that. It's something I found really useful for things like planning or perhaps even something like a design process of a logo. But yeah, anyway, back to the Illustrator content. Here's a quick tip. Say I have this circle here and I want to cut it in half or something like that. Usually I'd press C for the scissors tool and then click the anchor points and then delete it. But actually instead, you can simply press A for the direct selection tool, then click, and then just press backspace on your keyboard. Of course, this works for all kinds of shapes. And let's just go ahead and round off the ends of this stroke, why not? Next, something not a lot of people know about the eyedropper tool. You can sample the gradient of an object like so, which is fine if you want to do that, of course. Or you can hold down shift and then click specific colors along a gradient. This is one of those neat tricks that's always good to know in Adobe Illustrator. And while we're here, let's use a non-destructive workflow with gradients. If you want the same gradient across both shapes, obviously it's not going to work this way. Pressing G and using the gradient slider only works on the circle. Instead of uniting in the Pathfinder window, we can create a compound shape in the Pathfinder window. And then you can apply your gradient along the entire selection while they're all individual shapes. And let's go vertical here for maybe a cool abstract sunset or sunrise. You can pick which one. Now here's another handy tip that designers need to be aware of. In the properties panel, we can do all kinds of equations such as multiplying with the width and the height, and that's by using the asterisk symbol. Or we can simply type in the percentage of the original dimensions that we want to use. Again, in Illustrator, sometimes it's just about being really, really precise. And in this instance, quick too. Speaking of quick, I love using this tip in my workflow. Instead of cycling through your documents in Illustrator and wasting a bunch of time, just hold down the command and control key and then press the back quote key, which does look like this. You'll then be able to cycle through your documents in lightning speed. And remember guys, remember to make use of that screen to discount linked in the description box below. And if you wanna learn more Illustrator tips and tricks, just click that video on screen. And until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.